Well, welcome back to Workshop Friend. And uh, today, um, I hope to use the mending machine for the first time. So the project that uh, I'm going to be working on is a new fixed steady for my MyFood lathe. So here's the standard uh, MyFood fixed steady. And uh, in fact, I've just been using it to make a uh, draw bolt for the milling machine. So the largest diamond you can get in here is around about uh, two inches uh, when the jaws are fully extended. And, and I need to turn a shaft of two and three quarter inch diameter. So um, I've made some patterns and got some castings made. So we'll go to the bench and have a look at uh, what we need to do to make up a modified version of this, but uh, able to cope with much larger diameters. So here are the wooden patterns I made. And if you want to see the video about uh, getting this cast and making the patterns, then um, I'm just going to include a link here somewhere. So you should be able to find that separate video. Now, um, unfortunately, these got broken off and that's uh, another story, but uh, we've got the casting out and uh, here, are the, here are both of them. So this is as I come back with me from Pakistan. What I need to do now is to um, continue cleaning up the flashing and uh, these imperfections here. So I'm going to attack this with uh, some old files and then uh, we're going to look at uh, setting it up on the mini machine. Uh, just a couple of words on the design. Uh, what I have uh, arranged is um, to use the existing fingers um, as per the original design. So I'm going to actually make them interchangeable so they can be taken off there together with the clamps. Also the, the clamping bolt and the plate that goes into the bed underneath here. So that's going to be shared with the other, with the other fixed steady. But I have um, modified the, jet, the design somewhat to um, include jacking screws. And uh, what I found is that without those, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to get, um, get a, a good setting. last I get to use the milling machine and um, so what I'm doing is first of all skimming one side of the casting to get a flat surface for mounting later so I've done the simpler casting first and now I've set up the other one this is more complicated because it's got this boss on the bottom here so I've packed it up and I've kind of got the average uh, level across here and we'll skim across this face we'll skim across here I'll remove the strap clamp on this side, move it onto the other side and machine this boss too. So hopefully we can get three flat surfaces um, as a datum for further machining. I needed to make a couple of new bolts for clamping. The ones I had were either too long or too short. So I went over to the lathe and made some new ones. So I'm just moving the strap clamp to the other side so I can machine this boss to half the width. These are the bolts I just made. Um, I threaded this uh, 
3 8 UNC and this UNF. So I have a set of these. I started to make these when I got the shaping machine and uh, as an exercise uh, making the T-nuts. I'm also fortunate that the T-nuts for the shaping machine and the milling machine are the same size so that's that's very convenient. So hopefully this won't disturb the setup by moving the strap clamp. Hopefully everything will remain stable and I can just uh, machine this side, this uh, face here to size. I found that I had to carefully profile the inside of this radius to make sure they had adequate clearance with the other half of the hinge. Since this was the first time I was really using the milling machine, I was learning as I was going along. It was reassuring to know that uh, by using the dial on the Z axis, the vertical axis, I was able to approach zero and get a flat surface with multiple passes. I've reversed the casting with the boss on it and what I did was uh, clamp on this part only and that was part of the reason for machining the other side and then uh, putting my mini jacks in there um, and then I have double checked by just uh, checking the distance around the circumference. So I'm happy now that that's parallel with the table and we'll go ahead now and we'll skim this area move the clamp and skim this as well As I progressed, I felt emboldened to take uh, deeper cuts. So any comments on feeds and speeds, welcome of course. Just measuring the thickness of the hinge here, making it uh, half the overall thickness. So here I'm just finding the average centre of the hinge radius and then after that I went to the drill and drilled a pilot hole. And that pilot hole was just really for setting up. To get the hinge properly centered I did a trial setup here and um, when I was happy with the alignment of the top and bottom halves then I clamped it all and took it to the drill and then drilled through into the other half of the hinge and then that gave me a center for um, working on both halves independently. As you can see this part of the process was rather fiddly because I had to change the clamps from one side to the other to get it uh, mounted on the drill. But I thought it was worth doing this properly because it will affect the overall geometry of the fixed steady and the way the two halves come together in the clamping action. There's excess material on the left which stops it from coming parallel uh, because about one eighth has to be machined off each surface and then hopefully we get a nice parallel split line with the center line of the hinge. It was now necessary to determine the split line with reference to the drilled hole and I did that by eyeing up the casting. 
all other measurements will be made with reference to this datum line. So I now mounted the casting on an angle plate and aligned it so the datum line is parallel with my surface table. Okay, I've picked up the center line of the lathe which will be the center line of this radius here and I have scribed that on the end of the casting here I'll do the same on the other side On my machine, the center line of the lathe, in other words, the center line based on that distance, is actually a hundred thou off the center line of the bed. So I've dropped down here 100 thou and then um, marked off the edge of the slot, and um, that's. Um, because my lathe has been reground, it's not um, 1.375, it's actually 1.4. So I am just going to scribe those lines in. Incidentally, this material up here, the other angle plate and the weight there, is just to weigh everything down and then the lower edge as well. Okay, I've got uh, my little crib sheet here and uh, my center height on my machine between the top of the lathe bed and the center height is 3.516 which is approximately 3 and 33 sixty fourths. So um, I've added that to the height between my surface plate and here and I've got that, that height here now. So that's the surface I need to machine which mates on the, on the bed of the lathe. So I'm just going to scribe that in. So I will actually machine to this surface. You can see the allowance is actually not very generous but that will come out, I'm quite sure. And then um, the width I will measure. So I'll measure that with my micrometer. I'd like to get this to be a nice uh, good fit across the bed so I can slide the fixed steady along the bed and maintain the correct center height. So I've got everything I need now to go ahead and machine uh, this edge here, this edge, this flat surface. I'll also clean up the top. To set this up in the milling machine I just need to get this line horizontal with the table. So just slackening off the vise slightly so that I can uh, manipulate the casting and get this line horizontal.
I'm paying close attention to this dimension that fits between the ways. My bed has been reground, and uh, that means that my existing fixed steady is sloppy, and I, I want to be able to slide it up and down the bed and maintain alignment. So I'm going to pay close attention to that size. The other modification is that I'm going to allow my new fixed steady to go right up between these two extensions on the rear of the saddle so that I can come right up close like that. Now normally that's not necessary because you normally work on the tailstock end of the fixed steady at this end. But I've got a project coming up where I need to work on both sides. So that's why I'm going to make that extra modification. So the next operation here is to reduce the height of this. Uh, it's approximately half an inch on my lathe. So I'm going to take this down to about a 30 second under half an inch so that that fits between the ways and the clamping mechanism can work. And as I've just mentioned, I'm going to reduce the width of these lands here so that it fits between the saddle. You can see the surface finish on the side here isn't particularly good. Um, I guess it's the kind of um, insert end mill I'm using and the way I'm using it. But actually it was fine. It's actually much better than it looks. Um, after dressing lightly with the file, uh, the surface finish was fine. And um, But later on you can see I did use an end mill and I just experimented with an end mill on a side cut just to improve the finish. It's now time to drill the clearance hole for the 3 8 bolt for the holding down bolt and I'm just marking this out and taking it over to the drill and opening it up to I think it's 1 64th over 3 8 so over to my larger pillar drill and you'll notice that I've kept the work in the vise, the same setup I used on the milling machine, so everything is nicely aligned. And I'm just progressively opening up to the final uh, clearance hole for a 3 8 bolt. So I had a bit of a problem here with my zero Morse taper drill, which um, when it caught the corner of the work, it pulled it down and then um, disengaged. So I had to put a piece of wood underneath there and press it into place and then second time around there was no problem. There are quite a few surfaces to deburr. I always find that uh, deburring makes all the difference between a finished and an unfinished part and I do like to take a bit of care over this. I measured the gap in here and I made this to size and uh, I just very lightly touched it with a file just to remove any burrs and um, discovered that uh, it's a very nice fit this is exactly what I was hoping for so the advantage of that will be that I can slide it along the bed and maintain the setting we've got these two halves um, ready for assembly. Uh, probably going to work on the hinge next and uh, after that we can uh, adjust this to get a nice closure.